So I went over to the Lunar Orbiter Program offices and told my job was Mission Analysis and Design Manager. Huh? What are we supposed to do? And then how do you do it? Well, I was told what we were supposed to do, and it was up to me to figure out how I was going to organize a team to do this. And I want to emphasize that was what and I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. That was one of the most, uh, I don't know the words to say, rewarding, beneficial, uh, enjoyable effort to work with a team that I worked with. And I created part of the team, and part of the team was given to me. And I want to emphasize this was before the era of, you know, complex digital systems. And much of what we did, I'll, I'll get into this shirt, how we use digital, I mean, analog systems instead of digital. So we had put out, NASA had put out a proposal for what we called the concentrated mission to find landing sites for Apollo. Now, our requirement was, if you look at the front of the moon, well, anyway, plus and minus 45 degrees of longitude and plus and minus five degrees of latitude. That's the Apollo area of interest. So, hmm, we said, told in the, in the request for proposals, we said, we're gonna have five spacecraft and we're going to take, the, the, this film system could take 212 images. And we're gonna take all 212 images on one day. And that's the way Boeing proposed it and the way they would manage the film system. And it had a particular problem. We got back to three days. So that was a good afternoon's work I did. <laughs> so, okay, so we launch and we get into orbit. And the orbit is going around, this is the moon, it's going around the moon this way and at a slant this way. And the orbit is basically stationary and the moon moves slowly so we can walk across the area of interest based on our smooth, <laughs> black smooth areas from Flagstaff. And so we started taking pictures. And this was, uh, Tom and I were in mission operations. I had to approve every, expo every um, shot for 12 hours. And then Tom came in and he did so this was going on for 24 hours a day for over two weeks. It took that long to go across. Well, the results of the first pictures that we took on the first mission, oh, that's a little bit off of sight. Oh, this was 20, miles, 20 kilometers off. We had one that was even missed it by 40 kilometers. Hey, what's the matter with your orbit determination? You guys, get that right. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing as far as we know. There's something else going on here. So we didn't know what else it was, but we had to sit around the table and say, well, let's, let's shoot early instead of the, the given time. We'll, we'll shoot early because we had been missing them by overshooting. And we were guessing at how much. And we got to be pretty good guessers. And we, we pretty much got what we wanted on the first mission. We had to go to a totally different orbit design. And even there, we had to look obliquely to get the coverage over there, you know, because we only had so many frames and we, there was no way we were gonna change that. So Tom went out and worked with them and they, Boeing did a good job and they came up with a uh, orbit design and of course, the gravity field didn't matter that much that far out. I mean, the irregularities, but we modeled them anyway. And so 
we got almost the whole front side on four and finished up on the back side with five. The forgotten picture of the century on our first mission, one of the Boeing engineers in flight path determination said, hey guys, we could take a picture of the Earth from the moon. And the Boeing project manager found out there was somebody talking about that. Says, if anybody, one of my guys works on that, I'm going to fire him because it's not in the contract. Well, the Langley director, Floyd Thompson, had a conference with Hilberg, the Boeing manager and the position was changed. Do you, have you ever seen this picture? I think I have. That's the first picture of Earth from the Moon in 1966. And the reason John calls it the forgotten picture, three years later, the astronauts took a picture in color. And that's all anybody sees. But I've got this picture hanging in my house. It's this big, you know, and you can see the strips of the film where the, each film strip had to be, be mosaiced against the, the next one, you know. And so we, we used some of that film that we weren't supposed to use <laughs> to get that Earth picture, and it worked. And like Shogren was the guy who came up with the mask on. And that was a powerful concept. And let me just tell you how that helped Apollo. Our orbit was going around the moon this way. Apollo was going around this way, nearly equatorial orbit. So they were experiencing different parts of the, the, the variated gravity field. Now, one of the guys on our team was originally with Boeing, Moon Orbit. He went to Houston because he had, it was uh, Matt Grogan, and Matt was in our orbit determination program. And so he carried that knowledge to Houston, and they applied it to their orbit design and tracking philosophies. And he came up with a, a a uh, significant improvement. So they're in orbit and they're going to land, so they separate and they go behind the moon. Now, a critical thing is when does the signal reappear? And it didn't appear at the predicted time because of the gravity field difference, even though we had done the best we could with our orbit design. But Matt was ready for that and showed how to use that to update the descent trajectory. Now, you remember on the first landing when he pitched over to look, that's not it. And he had to move on down quite a distance. But how big would that distance have been without our, our uh, perturbed gravity field? So in ways that weren't really anticipated, we did more than just find a smooth landing site. I came to NACA in 1949. I graduated from NASA in 1986. I never worked a day in my life because I was always involved in something that hadn't been done before of significance. And this was just, not just one, this was, this was a major one. 